Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Matt and it is finally Fiendish Friday. Yes, 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 TGIF. Uh, I hope each and every one of you have a great Friday. I hope you have a great weekend and I hope you're having a great morning, evening, dawn, day or dusk. Uh, and first and foremost, I am sorry for not doing, doing a video yesterday, guys. I was just a little down in the dumps and I just couldn't find the motivation to do one for you guys. Uh, hopefully you guys will forgive me and I'll, I'll make sure I I do a decent job for today's review for you. Uh, please do like, share, and subscribe, guys. I am happy to see that there are new faces aboard. Uh, and do always remember to look in the description box, guys. There's always going to be some more information on on the film of the day, uh, basic synopsis, cast uh, a uh, starring cast, uh, your director, the runtime of the cut. I am watching. Uh, um, I said brief synopsis. Um, maybe some trivia if I find anything worthwhile that of mentioning um and there's always going to be a link for a trailer or a link for a scene of the film it, if i if i can't find one it's pretty darn rare you know there's only only been two so far that i have not been able to get anything for anyways now let's move on to the mo movie of the day the film of the day one that i i've thoroughly enjoyed enjoyed for gosh years and years i didn't see it till i was a teenager and i absolutely loved it uh ever since uh i don't know what it is about it maybe it's because it's so like uh mean-spirited uh it definitely delivers on the goods um it's one that will stick with you and if you'll either love it or hate it there's usually no really real in between ground i've noticed with this one uh or at least uh re as of like till now i haven't heard much of much much people really say oh i i thought it was just okay they either are like i love it or i can't stand it Anyways, uh, let's move on to it. This one came out in 1979, 1980-ish. Uh, IMDb has it listed in 1980 on the back of the uh, uh, Vinegar Syndrome release. I'm going to be showing you guys says 1979. Uh, this That was probably when it was uh, originally supposed to come out, when it was filmed, or, or maybe that was the exact release. I'm not 100% on that one. Uh, let's see. This one stars Nicholas Wirth, which you guys should know him from. Uh, not only from this uh, from Swamp Thing, uh, uh, Dark Man, um, uh, Scream, Blackula, Scream. He had a role in uh, uh, The Ladies Club, which was a rape revenge flick. Um, and then he also did a bunch of like like video game voiceovers in his later career. It looked like uh, like Command and Conquer and a few other things like that. And then we got James Westmoreland in here. Uh, he used to do some tel television stuff early in his career under Rad, Rad something. I forget what the last name was. But uh, I think it was Rad Taylor. But uh, I could be wrong. But uh, he went under a different name early in his career. Um, did a bunch of Western stuff, things of that nature. And then we got Flo Lawrence that was also known as Flo Garish at the time. Uh, I don't really know her from anything else. Uh, 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 to be quite honest, I think she did, did, oh, there was, she did, uh, um, Oh, she had a small part in uh, the Lords of Salem. That was the other thing that I know that she's done. Uh, other than that, I'm, I'm not very familiar with her career. Uh, then we got Ben Frank playing uh, James Westmoreland's uh, um, uh, uh, partner in this one. They're both uh, both cops that work on the uh, um, not vice but uh, 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 homicide. They're both homicide detectives. And then we got Denise Gallick in here. Um, I forget who exactly she plays, but uh, she, her character character is not a not one that that is in it for a whole lot and then this is directed by robert hammer and it's none other than don't answer the phone yes 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 there's the beast nicholas worth right there i am a huge huge fan of nicholas and his films uh if you couldn't tell i named off uh way I, I named off a lot more titles for him than than i did the other actors and i i knew more about him as an actor uh the fact that he was a a, a classically trained uh, shakespearean actor if you guys did not know that uh i find that i admire that he he is one of those type of he's an uh, uh an old school actor but he is able to get out of that um 
that realm and do things that are different than what he's normally doing. I think that's what I like most about why I like him so much. He's just, he was just a fun actor, you know, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Nicholas. Um, and then James Westmoreland is also uh, passed away too, and I believe Ben Frank has as well. Uh, I forgot to double check on his, but for sure Westmoreland and uh, Nicholas Worth have both passed on. Um, it was it's sad, sad, sad. Anyways, um, now, like I said, this came out in 1979, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you both both releases of this. Uh, this this first one I'm gonna show you is the DVD. This is the old Scorpion release. It has the uh, Katarina's uh, Nightmare Theater attached to it. Um, it. It's a fun little like uh, Joe Bob Briggs type show. Like they they have a um, a. a beginning like tell you a little bit about the film uh um something at the end and that's that's about it it has a like uh there's no like commercial breaks or anything like that in it but uh it's an interesting uh way to watch the film um honestly i could do do with or without that uh and then as far as the the definitive release of it in my opinion is this vinegar syndrome release right here i just recently added this to the collection i've been meaning to upgrade it for years uh because it's one that i like so much and boy am i glad i i finally finally Finally, finally did, guys. It was, uh, uh, I don't know what took me so long to get it. Uh, it, it was deserved. Yeah, this one also has a reversible artwork as well. Uh, it is that reversible, it is that artwork from the other one there. The, uh, the other, uh, the, the DVD, VHS, the DVD release that I have of, of this film. And as far as special features go, um, this one carries over all the same features that the, uh, DVD release does. There's a, uh, uh, two different, um, uh, Nicholas Worth interviews, one that he goes over over in depth about about don't answer the phone and then there's a second one it's called for for what it's worth and it's a, uh, a little bit of an interview that he talks about his other films in his career and I have watched both of those both of those interviews several 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 times I think that's why I know so much about him and so much about his career because I I'm just that big of a fan of him um, uh, now, uh, what is this one really about? It's about uh, this guy who is uh, J. Uh uh, uh, Nicholas Worth's character is a killer. He is a strangler. He goes around uh, uh, stalking beautiful co -ed, not co-eds, but beautiful women that in in uh, uh, with a stocking, and he puts a coin in the middle of it. And and it's funny because the cops, uh, the the cops are like, oh, it's it's it's, it's uh, quite obvious. It's it's like a making it like a faucet, so he can turn it on and turn it off anytime he wants. He must destroy. She must have struggled for minutes you know must have been excruciating one of those kind of ordeals <clears throat> he's got that going on and now he is a uh, uh, an ex-military um, Vietnam vet that has has come back a little um, uh, haywired he is he's not quite the same uh, or He's not, uh, uh, he definitely wasn't a good person going in because you find out things about him, like how he, uh, uh, always had a problem with his stepfather and how he wouldn't, uh, 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 amount up to him and how he would, how he was as a, as a human being, if he was a strong man or, or if he was just a coward, weak, weakling type, uh, sounds like he was a very domineering, very, uh, uh, bullyish kind of guy and what because he he created a he created a monster in my opinion a beast of a monster um but he's a Vietnam vet that that has some PTSD going on. He likes to call in on this this radio show, and that's the radio show that's um, uh, basically um, Flo Garish's character. She runs a uh, uh, like a a, a call in. Um, 
uh, radio show for people with with uh, with questions about uh, uh, like psychiatry, psych psychology, and things of you know things like that. She's kind of like an on on air therapist in ways. Um, he likes to call her, and he calls her under this Ramon character. Yo soy Ramon. I'm sorry, I got a little bit of cotton mouth going here. I can't really uh, 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 get my R to roll right now. Ramon, there you go. Yes, sir, Ramon. Yeah, but yes, he does. Uh, 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 call her in, and he he has this thing, fake thing, and he basically is telling her about all of these these horrible things that he he feels. Uh, he suffers from these horrible headaches, and and so on, and such, and such, and he basically is uh, uh, taunting her in ways, and it's it's uh, quite disturbing, and it's it's disturbing how how one man has uh, uh, created this much of. Uh, of uh, of so much fear in in the the uh, the the city of where they're at, and this was originally going to be called the Hollywood Strangler. So if that tells you anything about about where it's supposed to be, um, it is. They did base some of the stuff off of the Ho Hollywood, the uh, Hillside Stranglers, um, uh, Tony or uh, Kenneth Bianchi and uh, Anthony Buono, or however you pronounce his last name. Um, they did base um, ideas of that. That off of him, uh, off of those two, which, whoops, Fumble Ruski, um, that was, that was bad, Matthew, anyways, but, um, uh, he calls in and basically taunts her, uh, the whole while we got J James Westmoreland and, uh, Ben Frank's character, they're both homicide detectives, uh, they, they have the kind of person pinned down, like what kind of a person he, we're, they're dealing with. He's He draws sexual pleasure from it because he rapes his victims afterwards. Uh, this is before before the days of really of, of uh, uh, forensics and DNA uh, 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 investigations, so he can he can leave his his baby batter anywhere he wants without having to to uh, really worry too much about. It. Um, about the only thing that they can get him on is the fact that uh, he is a, a, a veteran um, and the fact that he is uh, uh, in it for the sexual thrill. That's about the only things that they can really, I guess, pinpoint on his character. So the the whole movie is basically following him and doing a, uh, a standard stock and strangle, not stock and slash, stock and strangle of of his vic many victims, uh, and then you got this this weird little love story going on between Westmoreland and Flo Garish's characters, uh, uh, which by the way, uh, fun fact about that is they both absolutely hated each other. Uh, Flo Garish ate a bunch of onions before hand and Westmoreland uh, did not shave for the morning so he went in with his five o'clock five o'clock shadow and just scratched the fuck out of her face uh, but they both went off like professionals and they they pulled through and did the scene without any hiccups um, it sounded like uh, uh, Flo Garish's character like sounded like she went th she was the one that was more riled up out of the two uh, it sounds like Westmoreland was very very, uh, would kind of antagonize her in ways, which is kind of like, you, 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 ah, you little shit, but, uh, uh, he, following him, stock and strangle, uh, the weird love story, the, him calling into the radio station, that's your basic setup of your movie. Um, it's very, very standard. Like most of the films I follow that I that I present you guys, they're very standard when it comes to basic plot synopsises. Which um, that's why I think I like them so much. You don't need to uh, uh, really think too hard with some of these some of these films that I review. You can kind of unplug the brain, unplug in, and just just uh, go along for the ride. And this is one of those that is very fun to just unplug and go 
along for the ride type movies. Uh, very mean spirited. I love the uh, the uh, um, soundtrack onto the on this one as well. It's got a fun little little uh, uh, score going on. It's uh, it fits it perfectly. I thought. Now, as far as any kind of ratings on this one, on, on a uh, uh, technical side, I would give this thing probably a 4 out of 5 because it stays pretty good uh, on a, on a uh, it keeps a nice momentum going, uh, there's fun camera angles going, uh, there's a lot of nice action the uh, the story flows smoothly. Um, uh, there's things like uh, one thing that I always um, am critical of is editing because uh, you can really like change a momentum of a film if you have piss poor editing. Uh, you can really really damage it. I feel like and then terrible score. Uh, or I mean not score but terrible sound like if you have a hard time hearing your actors um, it can really really affect that as well um, so um, it definitely pulls through on that and is it is above average I feel like now as far as an entertainment side goes this thing is a 4 out of 5 for me as well this is an 8 out of 10 kind of movie I feel like it's a staple to the uh, 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 horror genre I feel like and and I feel like more people need to check this one out, especially if you want to watch something that is really mean spirited, because this thing is is definitely a, a, an angry type of movie. So keep that in mind if you want to watch something that is really just raw. It's not bloody gory, but the guy is definitely. Uh, uh, vicious. <laughs> All right, guys. So an eight out of ten. And do check if you want to get it. I su highly suggest this Blu-ray. The picture uh, uh, transfer is just absolutely stunning. The sound transfer is great. And then, like I said, you get the same special features that are on this on here. The only difference is, is this one has the Katarina's Midnight Theater on it, where you have her hosting be the beginning and end of the the. Uh, credits so so that's really the only true differences that are going on in here all right guys i'm gonna put that those bad boys down i'm gonna get the hell out of here i hope all of you guys have a fantastic weekend i'll see you on monday with another uh fantastic uh, uh week of of films for you monday i'm going to be doing a uh uh one that i've been excited to to see for a long long time now i'm going to be doing it for sovhorror.com so i'm going to be doing a shot on video film for monday so do keep that in mind if you are a fan of those SOVs. All right, y'all. Peace as always.